is Facebook Live broadcast. It is the 6th of May and it is 7 p.m. here in the UK. Hope you are all well. Hope you've had a good week and that uh, you're all staying healthy and safe. We have an hour of whiskey related fun, quizzes, sort of prize giving, cocktails coming up for you as ever. And uh, we also have our announcements for our latest winners of our competitions as well. So let me run through what we have coming up this evening. I see that Sherry looks like you are the first one to join us tonight. Hey Sherry, how are you doing? Say hello, of course, when you arrive. Evening, good to see you. Um, this is what we got coming up for you this evening. As ever, I say as ever, we've been doing it for the last five weeks and it's becoming really popular. We have our Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz. This is where you can take on the other Whiskey Geeks that are joining us on this Facebook Live broadcast and outdo them with your immense whiskey knowledge and then end up with your picture in a frame on our Facebook page as our Whiskey Geek of the Week. So we've got that coming up and running through the broadcast. I have two cocktails of the week for you and actually I'm quite excited about them because I've got two cracking cocktails, one in particular that I'm very excited about sharing with you. And then of course we have the third cocktail which is our Mix With Me Challenge which comes up later in our broadcast. And that's where if you have the ingredients, if you have the skills, if you have the desire, I guess, to mix a cocktail with me, then we can mix it together. And tonight the ingredients you're going to need for that Mix With Me cocktail is whiskey, of course, coconut cream, peanut butter, um, chocolate spread, and uh, what's missing? What's missing? Oh, a maple syrup, maple syrup. So those are the five ingredients you need. I say coconut cream, I make coconut milk. Uh, let's say a few highs to people that have joined us. So Paul Slade, how are you doing? Good to see you as ever. Kieran, nice to see you Gary as well. Barry, always need to know that Barry is not here. Good to see you. Uh, Cheryl with me as ever. She's either with me uh, online or in spirit, or as you know, sneaks in and steals a few drinks off the bar. Let's see if we can keep her away from the bar tonight. Jeff, hi, how are you? Good evening, Lubka. Bruce, what's going on? Thank you. Bruce actually says hello to everyone. Mystery Hand, Cocktail Thief, Alfie, the dogs, the whole lot. Good to see you, Bruce. Paul, good evening to you. Let's say a quick thank you and help. Uh, everyone gave my friend Slickney a very nice birthday present. Oh, yeah, no problem. That was my pleasure. I hope you got what you wanted. Uh, Steve, how are you doing? And Kevin McLean, good to see you. All right, start the evening with a little dram. Remember, got to have a toast. Tell me what you've got in your glass. Tell me what you're drinking. Now, most of you get some of you get a different kind of spirit on the go. And some of you just get a cup of tea or a glass of water. That's fine. Tell me what you have on the go. Uh, what else have we got for you this evening? Uh, yeah, well, look, let's start with our winners, shall we? Always start with the winners of our previous week's competitions. So as you know, our members whiskey competition ended last night at midnight and the winner of that competition is hold on a second i'm going to tell you that in a moment and then also we have last week's spot prize again that's a members competition the spot prize competition uh, and that was for a set of ice ball molds so uh, if you don't remember what they look like let me show you uh, someone was going to win these so uh, let me show you how's that can you see there that's a better picture isn't it so someone's going to win those you just have to fill them up and stick them in the freezer because these are designed to mimic what they do in Japan where they actually create a block of ice and then carve them into balls that go into your cocktail. So let's find out who our winners are. So our winner of last week's whiskey competition is, and I'm not sure if you're online because I haven't seen you in one of our broadcasts before, but you will hear from me. It is Richard Magnowski. I think that's how you pronounce it. That's definitely how you spell it. Richard Magnowski. You are our whiskey winner for week 13 competition, so congratulations, I'll be in touch with you officially tomorrow. And uh, our spot prize winner for last week's spot prize competition for the ice ball molds is Steve Simpson, who I can see is with us there. Steve, congratulations again, I'll drop your line tomorrow and we'll get those ice ball molds off to you. Good job. So, what is this week's VIP members prize for our spot prize competition, which comes up right at the end of our broadcast? Uh, I'm just going to show you what that is. This week, 
we have a set of two Glen Cairn whiskey glasses. So uh, a twin set, if you like. So that's going to be the prize up for grabs right at the end of our broadcast. Um, but before we get anywhere near that, let's get into our Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz. So Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz this week is I'm going to ask you eight questions throughout the broadcast. You've got to get the answers to all eight questions because those eight questions will get you into the final round. And it's the person who answers the question in the final round first who becomes this week's Whiskey Geek of the Week. Is it going to be you? I don't know. Do you? Here we go. So, question number one. By the way, you're going to need a pen and paper. I'm just going to give you a second to get a pen and paper. While you do that, let's see if you are saying hello or drinking anything. Stuart, hi. How are you? Doing? Uh, Barry's got Bishop's Finger straight from the bottle. That's a beer. So a beer is like a whiskey, right? So a beer is like whiskey before it's distilled. Stuart, hi, how are you? Nikki, hey, Nikki, my sister in America. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, Paul Slade, drinking Dura Journey. Liking a bit of Dura Journey. Bruce has, got, Bruce has always got something special on the go. You've got half pecan praline whiskey and half bourbon on ice. Wow. I don't if you've got a name for that, Bruce. Uh, Kieran, Glen Goyne Legacy Series, liking that. Uh, congrats to Morphe Richards, it's <laughs> Barry. Uh, David Rose, hi, how are you doing? Having a dram of Game of Thrones like a really nine-year-old. Actually, I never thought anybody actually opened those. I thought you just bought those to collect them, the Game of Thrones series. But anyway, um, David's saying he's drinking it out of his new decanter, and that's because... David bought one of these. He sent me a picture during the week and uh, he's got one of these uh, with like a Boolean nine-year-old in it. So good use of that, I think, definitely, David. Uh, he was able to get that. I'm just going to do a little plug here. But as a member, as a Dream Whiskey's member, he got a 25% discount off of that, which is pretty cool. So <laughs> where did you find that picture? Oh, give. Uh, Steve, what you got? Uh, long row. Um, uh, which one? But lovely. I, I like it as well. And Barry, uh, thanks so much from Steve. Congratulations. Yes, absolutely. Congratulations going on there. Liking the twin set from Nikki. Okay, just hold you guys all there. Uh, cheers. Question one coming up for our Whiskey Geek of the Week. Here we go. Question one. I want to know which distillery uses the phrase taste rediscovered um, for their whiskies? So it's like a, it's actually a trademark. They use it as a trademark. So I want to know which distillery or which whiskey, if you like, uses the phrase taste rediscovered. That's question one. Okay. I'm going to give you question two as well before we go into our first cocktail. Really, actually, I'm, I'm properly excited about these cocktails tonight. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Thanks, Epic. Can't wait to use them in my next mix with me. Yeah, uh, I couldn't have gone to a better person. I think just, just sort of perfect for you right now. The perfect prize for the perfect person. So, Steve, I don't know if you've seen, I, I shared this post on our Facebook page, but Steve did a sort of mix with me session with his own friends, and uh, from what I can tell, knocked up some fabulous looking cocktails. So, uh, thank you for sending me those pictures, Steve. But also, if any of you want to pick up on the same idea, and you're doing your own mix with me sessions with your friends, let me know. This is, I find it pretty cool to hear that you're doing this sort of thing. Question number two, question number two for our Whiskey Geek of the Week. Question number two is this. Which distillery, which is near Archie's Town in Moray, Scotland, was founded in 1824 by the whiskey smuggler John Cumming and his wife, Helen. So which distillery near Archistown, Moray, in Scotland, was founded in 1824 by the whiskey smuggler, John Cumming, and his wife, Helen? Those are the first two questions. We come back for questions three and four after our first cocktail for this evening. So let me see, let's get, get this out of the way. Uh, our first cocktail of this evening is, uh, is relatively simple, but I'm using an ingredient that my wife has fallen in love with. So uh, she found this, I don't know, maybe six months ago, maybe even a year ago, and um, uh, bought a bottle, uh, killed the bottle, bought another bottle, wiped that one out as well, decided to buy two bottles because one bottle just wasn't lasting long enough. 
And before you know it, we've got more stock of this than we've actually got whiskey in this place. But the, the ingredient is this. It's rum chatter. And rum chatter is not dissimilar to something like Bailey's, which of course has got cream in it. In fact, it's the only way it's similar, if I'm going to be honest. Um, but it's a combination of rum, hence the name, rum chatter, uh, with cream, vanilla and cinnamon. And those flavours were the flavours that I was specifically looking for to create this cocktail, which I'm calling the gingerbread man. So it's going to go in a glass like this. This is a highball. This is quite a sexy little highball. What do you think? Sexy or not? If you think it's sexy, tell me it's sexy. If you don't think it's sexy, just don't say anything. But there we go. 12 ounce highball. You can use a straight highball. That's absolutely fine. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is, as is the case with many of my cocktails, this one is shaken. So I'm going to put the ingredients into the bottom half of my cocktail shaker. So let's start with the bit that really matters for us, and uh, that is whiskey. And I'm going to use, actually, I've been using this about the last four or five weeks in our broadcast. Um, I cracked it open for a broadcast about a month or so ago, uh, and so we're still going with this. And this is some Balvenie 12. I'm actually finding that this Balvenie 12 is, is blending beautifully in cocktails. So here we go. I'm going to add to my shaker 50 ml of this Balvenie. There we go. Good. There's 50 ml. Let's just get that back on and back on the shelf. Now I'm going to add the rum chatter. And with the rum chatter, I want about 35 mil, 30 to 35 mil. I keep saying about, because if you don't have one of these, then just get it as close as you can. Obviously, if you can measure it, if you've got a measure or a jigger, then try to get it spot on. So 35 mil of rum chatter. And you see this has got a creamy look to it. There we go. And I can already smell the vanilla and the spices in that uh, as, as I'm pouring it. I'm just going to give this a little rinse out because it's sort of creamy. Don't want this in my, in my jigger. Next thing that I'm going to put in is this. This is, uh, is vanilla liqueur. In fact, this is uh, quite a, a, a sort of posh one, actually. Uh, I discovered these about two or three years ago. Hence the state of the bottle. Uh, but this, this vanilla is so intense. It's got so much delivery of flavour and body. Absolutely love it. And I'm going to put 25 ml of this vanilla liqueur in to go with the vanilla little notes that are in the rum chatter as well. So we've got our whiskey, we've got our rum chatter, and we've got our vanilla liqueur. But you remember I called this a gingerbread man. And so I'm going to finish this off with this. And this is homemade ginger syrup. Now, I've done a new thing for you guys. I thought instead of me just bringing in homemade ingredients and say, this is homemade, difficult for you to find it. I've actually made a video and, uh, and I've put it on our website and there's a link in the description. So when this is over, if you're interested, you want to see how I made this ginger syrup, you can click on that link and it will take you through to our website where you can see me making just this today. Uh, but this is a really aromatic root ginger syrup and I'm putting in 25 ml of this. So I guess you can see this is also pretty sweet. So it's a sweet drink, it's quite creamy and, uh, and of course it's based on a delicious whiskey as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake this up, but I'm gonna shake this over one set of ice, which is there, but I'm going to serve it over another set of ice. So I don't want to use the same ice to shake the drink as I do to serve it over. So I'm going to put that in my glass waiting for the drink, that for shaking. Let's give that a tap and then let's give this a quick but thorough shake. Okay, we're good. We are good and done and that is looking great. Take my strainer and we're going to strain this gingerbread man cocktail into our glass. Let's bring it up as high as it will go. That's good. That's good. That's delicious. Let's just pop that there. Uh, I'm going to actually put in a tiny bit more ice because I want to bring that a little bit higher in the glass. And then really just to garnish it, Going to keep this really simple because I like simple garnishes. I'm just going to put, let's pop that in the side there. I'm just going to put a cinnamon stick 
on the side to go with the cinnamon spices that are in there. And there you have it. This is our gingerbread man. Cheers. Let me have a... Oh, it smells absolutely incredible. Uh, I've got to tell you the truth now. <laughs> this seems rather ironic. But I can't taste that in front of you. I can't taste in front of you because... Uh, I, uh, because of the cream, I can't drink the, the cream, the dairy that's in it. But I'm sure at some point, my wife is going to nick that off the end of the bar and, uh, and give us some kind of pricey of what that's like. See, Richie saying hi, he's here. Uh, Dad, that's cool. uh, did his come with a genie or just spirit? Hi, Kaz, good to see you. Kaz is last week's uh, uh, Whiskey Geek of the Week, by the way. Long road, Pete. Uh, 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 Cheryl Martin, what? I didn't know about this. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, that is now, I see what's happening now. So that is my belated look at my wife's comment about me using her rum chatter. But she'll come in here and she'll nick that. In a Hi Paul, love a bit of rum chatter. Oh, I have rum chatter. So sexy, my boss. Like your wife, thank you. Perfect. Uh, Simon, sorry. Yeah, late is better than not being here. Good to see you. You're going to be making a cocktail with us later, Simon. David, the lag in Game of Thrones was a spare bottle. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Uh, uh, what else have we got? A bit because I'm a little bit behind the thread here. Kieran, sounding good. Jane, watching you. Add a cherry, please. Okay, so that was actually a request from the person that is about to come in here and steal this drink in front of your very eyes. She wants a cherry in there as well. And actually, if you think about it, the cherry looks pretty good in the drink. Would you agree? I think so. Let me have a look. What do you reckon? That looks kind of nice at the top there, don't you think? All right, good. Let me just put that there. I'm just going to put that there where it's safe and no one can get it and no one's going to get it. It looks like my glass is a little bit dry, so let's put a little bit more of this in there. That's good. And uh, where are we? Ah, yes. iPad. So... Let's get into the next part of our Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz. You already have two of the questions. Very quickly, for those of you that joined us a bit late, question one was, which distillery uses the phrase, taste recovered? And question two was, which distillery was founded in 1824 by whiskey smuggler John Cumming and his wife Helen? All right, so let's get on to question number three. Because this is now a big accolade. For you to have your picture on our Facebook page as our Whiskey Geek of the Week. In actual fact, you know what? I've just decided this. I think I'm going to do a gallery as well on the, uh, on the website. I'm going to have a page, an actual page, for our Whiskey Geek of the Week. So when you drop down the page on, on our Facebook page, you still remain on the gallery. This is, this is really something that people who love whiskey want to be recognized for as a Dream Whiskey's Whiskey Geek of the Week. Question three, here it comes. Question three. Which whiskey distillery produces the Majors Reserve release? Okay, so there's a whiskey distillery that uh, produces a release called Majors Reserve. Majors Reserve. That is question number three. Really want to try that. Not going to try it just yet, though, because I can't. But I'm looking for someone to tell me what it tastes like. I know what it tastes like because I can smell it. It's absolutely spectacular. Question four. Here we go. Which whiskey distillery has had just five master distillers throughout its history, with the current one being Graham Cool? Now, I'll spell that for you. The current master distiller, his name is Graham Cool. Graham, G-R-A-H-A-M, and Cool, C-O-U-L-L. -L. Okay, they've had just five, and he is the latest one. He's the latest one. All right. So that's questions number one, two, four so far of our Whiskey Geek of the Week. Before I go into our next cocktail, which is the one that I am most excited about, actually. Let's see what else we've got going on here. Kaz has rum chat too. Uh, Nikki's saying it looks so good, and it really does look so good. And uh, yeah, the cherry. So Gary's saying that the cherry finishes it off very nicely. Thank you, Gary. I'm sure my wife would be delighted with that. All right, so um, I'm gonna, the next cocktail I'm going to do, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. And the cocktail is this. It's a whiskey version of the Singapore Sling, but not the Singapore Sling, because the Singapore Sling is one drink. It's actually the original 
Raffles Singapore Sling. So I don't know if you know much about the Singapore Sling or the Raffles Singapore Sling, but let me tell you this. The Raffles Singapore Sling was invented in 1913. It was invented by a Hyannese bartender whose name was Hyung Tong Boo. And he worked at Raffles Hotel on the Long Bar and he created this cocktail then. It is a legendary cocktail. In Singapore, it's almost like the national drink. So the, the Singapore Sling is like national drink. And for me, as an as a, a accomplished mixologist who's traveled the world doing all sorts of things, I had never been to the Raffles Hotel, but I had the chance to go there last year, obviously before lockdown. Uh, and, uh, and I went to the Raffles Hotel. The Raffles Hotel itself, sadly, was undergoing renovations, but the long bar was open. Uh, so my wife and I went to the long bar. We had an original Singapore sling. It is a wonderful drink. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, and what I want to do is I want to make a version for you. And essentially what I'm going to do is make the same drink, the same recipe as the original Singapore sling. But I'm going to take out the gin because the Singapore sling was a gin based drink. And I'm going to put in whiskey. And I've got to tell you, this is a smashing drink. This is really fantastic. It's also quite complex because you will see it has eight different ingredients in it. Eight different ingredients. All right, where do we start? We're going to start by getting our glass. Uh, and this glass is actually my touristy glass. This is the glass that they serve the Singapore slings in at Raffles Hotel. And, uh, and also, uh, it's got a little bit of uh, um, design on the front. Can you see that? Raffles Hotel. It's got some, it's got a guy and, uh, and a lady in some kind of art deco setting there. Very nice. Anyway, I had to buy one of those and I'm going to make our Singapore sling in this glass for you. This is how it goes. We start with our shaker and we add what would have been gin, but is in actual fact, we're going to add 30 ml of whiskey. Now you might think, well, this is significantly less than you would normally put into a cocktail. But in actual fact, you're going to see there's fair few ingredients that make up the alcoholic content of this. Interestingly, when asked, Nyam Tong Boon said that he created this as a, as a pink drink because at the time, culturally, ladies in Singapore were to be seen drinking alcohol. Seen drinking alcohol, so he made it look more like a fruit punch and even taste like a fruit punch, which I guess makes it kind of dangerous. So we've got 30 mil of that. Then we are going to add 15 mil of cherry brandy. And cherry brandy is the predominant flavor of fruit in this. It's cherry brandy that makes it unrecognizably a Singapore sling. Interestingly, if you have a modern day Singapore sling now, it's really simple. It's gin, cherry brandy, lemon juice, splash of grenadine, maybe splash of soda, that's it. But this is a much more sophisticated blend of ingredients. The next thing that I'm gonna put in is some triple sec, which is like Cointreau. So you might be familiar with one or the other, or maybe both. Uh, but this is a really small amount, and all I want in here is seven and a half mil. It's just in there as a touch. So seven and a half mil of our Cointreau triple sec uh, liqueur. Then I'm going to add, let's put that back because I want to get this in first. This is Benedictine. Uh, I don't know if many of you know about Benedictine. It's a French herbal liqueur. Uh, many people call it Dom uh, because of that. Dom. There. But DOM actually stands for Dio Optimo Maximo, which I think loosely translated from Latin means in God most good, most great. Um, and that's because this was produced by Benedictine monks many, many uh, years ago. So again, we're going to put in this wonderful herbal, slightly spicy liqueur, again, about seven and a half mil. That is all. There we go. So this is all alcohol. So, uh, only small amounts of the last couple, but still alcohol. Then I'm going to add some of this. This is Angostura bitters, and I want two big dashes of Angostura bitters. One, two. And we want some colour and some fruitiness. And this is grenadine, and the grenadine is in there to make it pink and to make it sweet and to take all the edges off of the sharper or harder ingredients. And we want 10 ml of that. 
It's actually a little bit more than the Benedictine. There we go. Okay, that's good. So we now have six of our ingredients in there. Next ingredient that I want to put in is some lime juice. And I'm going to squeeze in about 15 ml of fresh lime juice. You can see why this is a bit of a palaver to make at home, palaver being a very old fashioned word. Um, but it, it's worth all the effort. But of course, if you go to Singapore and drink it, they're making drinks like this for hundreds, maybe thousands of people. They're, they're a lot faster, obviously, at doing it. And of course, they're not explaining what they're doing. So 15 ml, there we go, of and juice. Let me just get a little bit more everything out of there that I can. And that's just to give it something to cut through the sweetness that I've just put in. So I've just put in a fair amount of sweetness, that will cut. And then the juice, really the juice all comes and the fruitiness comes from pineapple juice. And we want a hundred ml of pineapple juice. So let me get that in like that. There we go. And then another one. This is uh, this is not the pineapple juice that they use in uh, the Raffles Hotel. And that's because in the Raffles Hotel, they have their own pineapple juice, pineapple juice produced in Singapore, pressed fresh for them every day. So it's not the same. So I guess if you were to go there, you're going to get a very signature style of their own drink. But pretty much, we're ready to go. So I'm going to put some ice into a glass. Just a little bit of ice. That's good. And then I'm going to obviously put some ice into our shaker. And we're going to give this amazing whiskey raffles sling a bit of a shake. Let's just take that off of there. And here we go. Wow. I can actually smell the ingredients because having splashed half of it up my arm, uh, I've got a fairly good idea of what they taste like. Okay, and smell like. And here we go. Here we go. Oh, this is looking good. We've got a little bit of foam stuffing at the top. And I'm just going to give that a little shake around so that we can get the last bits of foam out of there. And that's looking absolutely gorgeous. Now, the way that this is garnished uh, traditionally is with a little wedge of pineapple and, uh, and a cherry. Uh, right now, in the UK, in lockdown, finding it incredibly difficult to get pineapple. So I've done something slightly different. So I've got the cherries. I decided to put a cherry with just a little bit of lime like this. Uh, lime is in the drink, so it makes sense. And I'm just going to pop that in the top like so. And there is our whiskey Singapore sling. What do you think? I mean, honestly. Exciting. I can definitely taste this one. So here we go. Cheers. Oh God. Loving that. I mean, absolutely loving that drink. If I'm entirely honest with you, Dream Whiskey's fans, I would say with the whiskey, I kind of prefer it. I mean, I love gin and I love a uh, Raffle Singapore sling, but I just love it with the whiskey. Maybe we should have some of, I know, I know, like a new movement, maybe a movement that's, that's pushing this one forward. Mmm. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. Love that drink. What are you saying? Uh, bye, bye, gingerbread man. Okay, oh, gingerbread. <laughs> you saw her take that, did you? Haven't heard. I don't know if she's made any comments yet, but I haven't heard from her. So Jeff says bye, bye, gingerbread. Hi, this is Dave. Uh, been to Singapore raffles as well. Paul said it's. Oh, here we go. So Cheryl, mm, that is good. So that, uh, and it's gone. <laughs> yeah, cats. Uh, Paul was there in 1968. Okay, so a little ago. So before their renovation. A cool glass, Nikki. I agree. I agree. Um, <laughs> Cheryl saying, "What are you using glass now? I am in proper trouble after this broadcast." Tell the story about the peanut shells on the floor. The peanut shells on the floor. So if you haven't been to the long bar in uh, uh, in Raffles, uh, which hopefully you, you get an opportunity to, to visit one day, maybe. Um, one of the things they do is that they, they serve peanuts in their shells. And the idea is that you just eat the peanuts, crack the shells, and you throw them on the floor. So you've just got a bar full of people consistently covering the floor in peanut shells. Uh, and, but there is a story behind that. 
And the story behind it goes back to uh, the days of uh, colonial Britain and, uh, and hunters and uh, tigers running, running wild. And apparently, the story goes that they would put peanut shells all over the bar and all over the bar floor to notify them if a tiger was sneaking in. So the tiger would creep in and crunch the peanuts and then they would know that they were in danger. I don't know if that's true, but it's a story that I've heard. I've put it out there many times, but, uh, but either way, it's kind of cool when you get there and you see all the peanuts all over the floor. Oh, tiger tigers. Barry, does the librarian frequent raffles? Uh, I'm right. Okay, you got me with that one, uh, Barry. The librarian frequent that means uh, love the drink. Looks awesome. Looks awesome. Can't wait for uh, for that one. <laughs> so, so Cheryl, who's uh, probably completely wasted the first drink, is now lining up for the second one. Uh, have another sip. And, and, uh, <laughs> Okay, I know what you're thinking, Nikki. Uh, he was there with, uh, what's that? Rinse wind when I was there. Uh, don't know what that means. Oh, I see. Okay, is that, is that like a, a, a joke that pre did? Um, great story. Uh, sounds like the start of a joke. A tiger walks into a bar. Yes, <laughs> it does. Maybe I can turn that into a Tim Vine special. All right. Mm. Another little sip. Uh, where are we? I don't even know where we are. Oh, of course, questions for the next part of our quiz. So we're up to questions five and six in our Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz. You've had four of the questions so far. Remember, after these two questions, we have our Mix With Me cocktail coming up. So this is the chance uh, for you to mix along with me. Now, uh, I gave you a number of ingredients that might have caused some problems for people. In a way, it doesn't really matter, because if you can get some of them, or part of the ingredients, then, then just have a go, have a go. Uh, just to remind you what you're going to need. You're going to need some whiskey, your whiskey of your choice. Uh, you will need some maple syrup, peanut butter, chocolate spread, and coconut milk. If you don't have chocolate, then get milk. If you haven't got chocolate spread, then don't worry about it, leave it out. But if you've got most of those ingredients, then, then play along, join us. This is your last opportunity to grab those ingredients and play along. Uh, before we actually get into that cocktail. Nikki in America, are you doing that? Here we go. Question five of our Whiskey Geek of the Week uh, competition. I would like to know the name of which distillery means Valley of the Deer in Scottish Gaelic. So in Scottish Gaelic, the name of which distillery means Valley of the Deer. If you are a whiskey fan, you know that. Listen, let's put it out there. I know most of you Googling away when I do these questions, but hey, that's good. That's kind of fun. Uh, it still requires a bit of skill by the end of it when I ask you to respond speedily. But if you do know that, uh, then that probably is a reflection on the fact that you get around to whiskey distilleries and that sort of thing, because you would have heard that. So name of which whiskey distillery means Valley of the Deer in Scottish Gaelic. Question number six. Which whiskey distillery will celebrate its 200th anniversary in four years' time, in 2024? Now, there is one other distillery that also will celebrate its 200th anniversary in 2024. It's not the one that I'm looking for, and I have actually mentioned it in an earlier question. If you happen to double up on that distillery, you're still sort of okay. You're still in line with what, you, what we want, but this is a different answer to that one. That's probably confusing the hell out of you. But anyway, which whiskey distillery will celebrate its 200th anniversary in four years' time in 2024? That is question five and six. There are just two more in our Whiskey Geek of the Week before we actually get to the final question, the final round, to see if you are going to be this week's sixth. Whiskey Geek. Cheers. Okay. Now, before we get in... Ah, Terry Pratchett reference. Okay. Now I got what you're talking about. Thank you. Uh, Gary Cummins, better hurry up. Cheryl will be, <laughs> will be there. There will be none left. Uh, you can never tell. You're like a ninja, really. 
comes in out of nowhere and before you know it you know empty glasses back in place uh full glasses gone it's just uh it's yeah i mean really i don't even know how much at night when she goes out wearing you know a black suit and the hood and the sword down her back and everything but ninja is what i'm thinking uh, it's confirming yeah thank you for that david uh not sure about this one to be honest um oh that's Gary uh, talking about this one here, which looks like it's gone down a bit. So I'm guessing she might have tried it. <laughs> decide. David Rose, I know the Valley of the Deer. Good. Keep it to yourself, David. Remember, you've got to keep these questions to yourself. This all leads up to the answers at the end. Uh, so don't share your answers. I uh, wonder why it was still there. Uh, Jane saying, what's in the jar between the plant and your whiskey decanter? Here? This very special ingredient, um, these are just little cones, actually. They're nothing to do with the bar at all. They just sort of look nice in there. I mean, I could fill it full of ice, but it's just going to turn to water every day. So, so there we go. Uh, I've got the joke. A tiger walks into a bar and stands there without saying anything. The barman waits for a while and then said, why the big paws? <laughs> Loving it. Loving it. Thank you for that, Simon. <laughs> Loving your jokes. Big fan of Simon's jokes. Okay, um, yes, but wow, rum chatter disappeared. Uh, changed completely. Rob, hi, how you doing? Um, yeah, hand alert, stole the cherry. Yeah, that's right. So the drink comes back, cherry gone. So you know she's got to think of Maraschino cherries. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We have now got up to the part of the evening where we are going to do our, our mix with me challenge. So let me just get all our ingredients into place. So we've got some peanut butter. I just got a jar over here. Let's put that there. Um, I've got some maple syrup. Uh, you can pick your brand. I don't mind which one it is. I've got some chocolate spread. Uh, the most famous one is Nutella, obviously, but in anything that you want to use, I've got that there. Let's keep all our bits and pieces here for the moment. In here, I've got some milk, but not regular milk. This is coconut milk, so it's not a non-dairy one. Um, and the coconut does definitely add something to it, but if you don't have coconut milk, you can use regular milk. That's absolutely fine. Uh, what else have I got? And then, of course, the whiskey. And I'm going to put it in this kind of glass. Now, remember, you can put it in whatever glass you want. The whole point of this is it's about your interpretation of what I'm doing. And as I've said every week, please do send me a photograph of your cocktails if you are making this cocktail send me a photograph now last week i only got two people send me pictures of their drinks and i didn't put them up because what i want to do is sort of put them up as a as a batch so i'm going to put those two from last week up with any photographs that you send me this week the best we had i think was four or five actually sent photographs so if you're making this send me a picture i want to see what you're going to do now i'm going to do something that i didn't ask you to get the ingredients for but i just thought it'd be a kind of interesting thing to do so I thought it'd be quite nice to have some peanuts around the edge of the glass and because we're using peanut butter, obviously, and uh, um, I haven't got any peanuts. <laughs> so I looked around and I had some pistachios. So what I've done is I've ground up the pistachios and uh, you can probably see in there. Take a look. So it's looking suitably green and pistachio like. Not quite ground down, so I'm just going to give it another little go. It takes a while, actually, to grind pistachios. I want to grind them down enough so that I can put a kind of pistachio rim on the glass, which is what I'm going to do. You absolutely don't have to do this, but you know what? If you're locked down and you don't make this now, but you make this at another time, and you're thinking, how can I make it look really high-end cocktail? This is one of those things that you can do. So let me just pop that in there. I'm going to take pistachios and just sprinkle them on this plate here so I've got far more pistachios than I need but you need a fair covering in order to get the sort of pistachio rim on the glass I use the rest for something else a little bit later all right uh, you've seen me do this before but let me show you again I'm going to take in this case a lime uh, but any kind of citrus right I just want something to wet the edge and the way you do it is you hold the flesh bit up, you just put the edge into the flesh like so, and then I'm just rotating the glass. 
So as I do so, can you see that I'm spinning that? I'm not sure if it comes up on the on the screen that you can see, but I'm just making sure that that is wet. And then there we go. I'm just putting that into our ground pistachios. And you end up with this sort of cute looking little pistachio rim on the edge of the glass, which looks rather nice, I think. Like I say, tons of crushed pistachios there, but I use them for something else later on, so nothing goes to waste. All right, so mix with me, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. You need a shaker. If you don't have a shaker, then you can use something else. You can use a jar with a screw top lid. I've done a cocktail before with a water bottle, so you can use a water bottle. Anything with a screw top lid works. Or worst case scenario, just put it in a jug and just try and make the whole thing in a jug. You know, one way or another, we can make this drink. Uh, I was going to do it in this, but I want you to see what I've got going on. So I'm going to put it in one of my glasses. I uh, just need to rinse that out and give it a bit of dry. Uh, I want you to see uh, what happens in here. Because we're using various sort of thick, pasty ingredients, we need to make sure that we break them down before we bring this whole cocktail together. Okay, starting with the peanut butter. So I'm going to take excuse me as I lean over I'm going to get a spoon and I'm going to take what will amount to I guess about a very large spoon of peanut butter I'm actually using crunchy peanut butter um, uh, I guess really I'm going to end up straining the crunchy bits out of the drink so I would say that if you've got a smooth peanut butter that's going to be better because then you don't have to do that but I've got this sort of crunchy peanut butter uh, let's, let me get that off of the spoon. So I want to make sure that that's all in the bottom. So I'm going to take another spoon. It's kind of messy, this, really, but hey, that's okay. That's part of the beauty of this drink. Now, the first thing we need to do is turn that peanut butter into something smoother that's going to mix more easily. And I'm going to do that by adding a little bit, not too much, of our coconut milk. So just, what's that, five mil, something like that? Let's just mix that up. Just going to break that down and, uh, and and it's worth spending the time doing this if you just put all the ingredients in and actually you do nothing more than just put them in and then try to shake them together you can end up with loads of lumps in your cocktail uh, now that that's blended it's a bit a little bit like making a, a cake or a roux i'm going to add a little bit more of that i need it to be a bit thinner so breaking it down again I'm actually using the end of a bar spoon, so depending on which bar spoon you may or may not have, you have this little disc at the end which is really handy. If you haven't got anything like that, then you just need to take a little bit more time in breaking everything down. But my bar spoon is, uh, is making the job a little bit easier for me. You can use a pestle, maybe even the end of a rolling pin. That's getting there. I'm just going to put a little bit more of this in. So now I've got probably around about 10 or 15 of the coconut milk in there, but don't worry about that. That's not important. All right, good. Next thing that we want to do is we want to add some of our chocolate spread. Now, I need to get another spoon because I don't want to double dip this. Uh, and I'm going to go again for a, like a heap teaspoon, which probably in the end, oh, look at that. Honestly, how good is that? In the end, this is going to be worth, I guess, two teaspoons or maybe a whole tablespoon by the time you've worked out what that heap is valued at. So now we've got our peanut butter. We've still got, obviously, our coconut milk in there, which I've used to break this down. Uh, and then we've got this sort of chocolate. And again, I want to mash this up. This has got to be, we don't want any lumps in here. We want this to be sort of syrupy like so that when I eventually shake it up, it's going to break down properly but it's working well now it's working easily and this just looks like to me pleasure personified this looks like calories over the top yes but pleasure big calories lots of pleasure small calories, not so much pleasure that's how i'm thinking right let me talk to you before i go gary said yes absolutely i thought they were beetroot or pine okay unfortunately i won't be mixed on tonight ah okay hello uh says Rob. Thank you, you're here. John's joined us. Hey, John, how are you doing? Uh, last time I did cart was in the garden. Right. Who had pistachio? Anyone? Right, okay. What else is going on? I know someone that you 
Oh, your trouble big guns. Thank you, darling. And who else? I knew someone who didn't do cartwheels even when he was drunk. Fun, I think. Shady. Hi, how are you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, okay, right, so here we go. We now have our peanut butter, we've got our chocolate spread, and some of our coconut milk in there. Now I'm going to add this. This is Canadian maple syrup. Now you get different standards of this stuff at different prices. In the UK, you can pick up a bottle of this for as little as a pound or as much as about eight or nine pounds. Um, we don't need any kind of mega expensive things here. So, and by the way, if you don't have maple syrup, you can use other sweeteners. You can use other kinds of syrups. If you've got anything for your coffees, you can use those. You can use honey. I don't mind what it is, but I've used this because maple syrup tastes like maple syrup. This is 10 ml of maple syrup. All right, this is looking good, very good. Okay, I've got to the point now where this is all nicely mashed together. It's all blended, it's smooth, it's going to blend out nicely. I'm going to take this out of the shaker because now we are getting close to being ready to shake. As you know, this is a whiskey cocktail and we need to get our whiskey in here very quickly. So I'm going to take 50 ml of our whiskey. Let's pour. Here we go. Up to the top and in. That's looking delicious. And then finally, we need to add some more of the coconut milk. So the coconut milk, the idea is whether it's coconut milk or milk, you want around about 50 to 75 mils. So I've probably got in there 20 at the moment. So I'm going to put in another 50 now. That's good. And maybe just a touch more. So I'm up around 75, 80 mils. Good. Now, it is time to shake. Uh, let's get this on the top. Actually, let's put some ice in it. Here we go. Now let's get some ice in it. And give this a good shake. This is really good. I hope that some of you are making this cocktail at home. Wow, feeling, feeling good. Let's get that off of there. Get my strainer and strain into our pistachio rimmed glass. And this gorgeous drink is our peanut butter and chocolate spread martini. I don't even really have a name for this. It's just an absolutely gorgeous concoction made out of things that you may well have in your cupboard at home during lockdown. Wow, looking good. Got to taste this before somebody gets her hands on it. What else? Miriam wants one. Miriam, are you old enough to drink? Uh, Paul, getting his own back for the over the last few weeks. Time to up your game. <laughs> uh, Cheryl hasn't found an item yet. Whoa, you haven't hidden something else in a bar, have you? Uh oh. Do you guys know what my wife has been doing over the last few weeks? She keeps hiding things in the bar, which some of you see and I don't see. Uh, that's now made me feel really quite insecure. I was looking at a different game. You're not even looking at what I'm doing. You're just looking at what she's left in the bar. Wow, talk about takeover. Unusual colour. Oh my God, that looks amazeballs, says Nikki. Well, let's find out if it is amazeballs. Let's try that. Oh my God. Excuse me if saying, oh my God, offends anyone. But wow, <laughs> that is incredible. I need a name for that drink. What do you reckon, guys? Name for the drink? Did I write something down? Let's see if I wrote something down for that when I came up with this drink. Did I give it a name? No, I didn't. I just wrote down peanut butter to remind me what I was going to do with you guys. This needs a name, but honestly, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I'll tell you the thing that's probably really dangerous about this. You could serve this to people, whether they like whiskey or not, they would have no idea that it had alcohol in it. And that's no surprise, I guess, because it's full of chocolate spread and peanut butter and coconut milk. But wow, this is a drink. Let me just get this glass out of the way. Whoa, yes. she's just come straight. <laughs> no messing around. That's what my wife looks like when she is on a mission.
That is straight in. Take the glass. Oh, God. She's completely, what do you reckon? Jane is behind you, Paul. <laughs> uh, taste that. Oh, right. Oh, what are you saying? Something's behind me. Like, she's put something behind me. What's she put behind me? Oh, I don't know what she's put behind me. No, don't know what she's put behind me. She's just completely sabotaging this. You know what happened, right? Sure, I guessed about four weeks ago. But since then, it's just been over every week. Made mine, Bruce. Bruce, you made it excellent. It tastes like a candy bar. I actually, I think it tasted better than a candy bar, but like a candy bar. Look, Jane, you could call it Jane. Uh, you, you've got to be quick, and uh, it's got to go to number one, and number one's taken it. Um, Steve Simpson, I'll give that at some point. Yeah, absolutely right. Then, a chop nut whiskey teeny. <laughs> Why not? Nick just saying, call it amazing. What's in that? Uh, I don't know what your link is there, Bruce, but I'll, I'll, I'll put it after the broadcast. Uh, just put that. Um, He's okay, nice one, Cheryl. Yay, Cheryl. <laughs> uh, how about the Snoopy Smooth? Hey, liking that, Paul. Like the Snoopy Smooth, actually. Reference to peanuts. Yeah, absolutely. Gary's going, go for it, Cheryl. Cheryl has more fans than Dream Whiskey's has. Cheers. Uh, listen, I'm just pleased that she doesn't like this drink. I got something to drink. Uh, so we've got two more questions now for our Whiskey Geek of the Week to bring us towards uh, the close of that little quiz. Mm. And remember, before the end, we're also going to have our little spot prize giveaway for members. By the way, if you're not a member, and I know I beg you pretty much every week to think about joining up and signing up, but we're giving more and more stuff away to members. We're sort of packing out what the members get. So... Actually, our competitions where we give away the whiskey and these little uh, uh, spot prize giveaways as well on our live broadcast are actually becoming a very small part of what we do. It seems to be much more about the content now. Um, we also have, as you know, we've got that 25% discount on the whole Urban Bar range, which David Rose, he bought one of these at a huge discount. Well, 25% discount anyway. Um, uh, we've also got these sort of new behind the scenes, like special videos as well. Like I said, the ginger syrup one. If you want to go and see me making the ginger syrup for the first cocktail, you can see that. It's a video. We're going to have more of that sort of content. Join us. Join us. We need you. We need you to join us. Otherwise, eventually, we're going to struggle to hold on. So join us. Be one of our members. So we don't have many members at the moment. We just got like a small hardcore. I know may maybe many of you think that we've just got thousands of people out there, but we really don't. We really don't. Um, okay, here we go. Question seven and eight. Who is going to be our Whiskey Geek of the Week this week? By the way, uh, in case I forget it, if you made this, send me your picture, please. Not, not directly, um, because it's difficult on Facebook. It's through Messenger, or you can actually email it uh, to the Dream Whiskey's email address. Here we go. Question seven of eight. I would like to know... Which distillery runs the Shivers Blending Experience Tour? Wow. So this is the Shivers Blending Experience Tour. If you are a whiskey fan, whether you are from the UK or you live across the world and you come to the UK on some kind of whiskey pilgrimage, you need to go here to this whiskey distillery and you need to do this tour. It is fantastic. It's, it's kind of pricey. It's so like £60 for the tour, but wow, you have a great time, you taste tons of whiskies, you end up making your own whiskey, it's brilliant, you're blending your own whiskey, not making it, obviously. But which distillery is it? That was question number seven. While you're writing that down and looking at the answers from one to six, I'm just going to have another taste of my fabulous whiskey raffles Singapore Sling. Question number eight. I would like to know, what is the name of the place that produces and repairs more than 150,000 barrels every year for the Speyside distilleries and other distilleries in Scotland? What is the name of this place? So it makes and repairs 
around about 150,000 whiskey barrels to be used by the Speyside distilleries and some other distilleries around Scotland. Very famous place. What is it called? So, ladies and gentlemen, wannabe geeks of the week, we are now at a point where I've asked you eight questions and you should have eight answers. And those eight answers are hopefully going to give you the key to the next part of this. Before we do this, let's see me. So Cheryl is describing that, uh, the last one I did, the mix with me, that some of you hopefully have done with me, uh, as uh, like a Snickers in a glass. Which I mean. Rob's saying whiskey nuts. Well, as the name of the drink, whiskey nuts. Got some nuts, yeah. Um, Bruce is saying Snickers does make a maple one here in the USA. Is that right? Wow. Cheryl, really, but it's awesome. Okay, I think so as well. Uh, Dave is saying the discount was well worth the cost of the membership. Just need Urban Bar to get some Northern glasses. <laughs> Well, I know the guy, obviously, from Urban Bar. I'll have a chat with him about that. But I think he might be slightly worried about uh, copyright and that sort of thing. But um, uh, they have amazing stuff there, as you know. Lubka. Paul, I could not find spot price questions a week ago. Were there the same for two weeks? Uh, you mean on our website, Lubka? Lubka? Uh, they definitely updated. Um, I update them instantly after after the the competition. I'm, I'm wondering if you need to clear your your cookies or something on on your uh, on your laptop or whatever it is, uh, uh, and refresh the whole thing. Uh, you may be stuck in some kind of uh, parallel universe there, but um, I can I can guarantee that we update it instantly after the show. Uh, Bruce, what's going on? The new ones appear 10 to 15 minutes after the show. There you go. So they update. So I reckon you've just got some kind of, I don't know, the cash or, uh, or cookies or whatever going on there. But look, uh, just refresh it and they should come up. All right, here's the question. I've asked you eight questions. You need to get the answers. And here's, here's the Geek of the Week question. Geek of the Week is this. What do the eight answers have in common? That's it. If you know Scotland, you know the whiskey distilleries, you will know what they have in common. What do they have in common? The first one to put their answer in the comments here is Whiskey Geek. Look, uh, saying, David saying, sorry, question seven, could you repeat? Question seven. Which distillery runs the shivers blending experience, as in shivers, like shivers regal, C-H-I-V-A-S. Uh, oh, Bruce has put the link, maybe I'm saying probably, I could, Paul saying, Speyside is not the answer, She's saying, Shivers, that is not the answer, I'm actually quite pleased that I've managed to get a quiz that Paul couldn't get, or at least couldn't get first time around, so Speyside is not the answer, Shivers is not the answer, oh, I see what Steve is doing, Steve's replying to David, sorry Steve, I see what you're doing there. No, we want something else. Um, if nobody gets this answer and they can't get it, I will start giving you clues. Speyside says, Kevin, no. Kaz says, Speyside, that's not what I'm looking for. Bruce, is there a tiger involved in this? Wouldn't you love there to be a tiger involved in this? I'm just going to have another drink because you've inspired me to go back to the Singapore sling. Ah, I seem to have got a quiz for you. It's really difficult coming up with these quizzes, especially when you find that people preempt what you're going to say like for the first three or four weeks you knew what the final answer was before i even got halfway there but maybe i've got you this week here we go new comedy one nick say whiskey <laughs> well i guess whiskey is there but sorry nicky you're not our geek of the week uh show us how we're out of stock here we go, Kevin McLean, the Malt Whiskey Trail is the correct answer. Well done, Kevin McLean. You are our Whiskey Geek of the Week. So, let me explain. The answer is, this is what they have. They are all part of the world famous Malt Whiskey Trail. These are the seven distilleries plus a cooperage, which are all part of the Malt Whiskey Trail. Let me tell you what the answers are just so you understand where we are coming from. So question number one was this. 
Uh, which distillery uses the phrase taste to be discovered? That is Ben Romac. Question two was which distillery near Arches Town uh, was founded in 1824 by whiskey smuggler John Cumming and his wife Helen? That is Cardu. Question three, which whiskey distillery produces the major's reserve release? That is Ben Grant. Question four, which whiskey distillery had just five master distillers throughout its history? The current one is Graham Cool. That is Glen Moray. Question five, the name of which whiskey distillery means Valley of the Deer? David Rose even said he knew this. This is Glen Fiddick. Which whiskey distillery, question six, will celebrate its 100th anniversary in four years' time in 2024? Well, technically, Cardu will. But what I was looking for is in Libet. Question seven, which distillery runs the Shivers Blending Experience Tour? It's Strathyla. And finally, question eight, what is the name of the place that produces and repairs over 150,000 barrels, et cetera, et cetera? This is called the Speyside Cooperage. That's where they do that. And all eight places are eight of the nine stops on the Malt Whiskey Trail. Now, just for fun, and just for fun, I have left one out. So there is a ninth venue. There is a ninth venue that used to be a distillery, but is now a museum. Does anyone know what that place is? That's a show. Kevin, on the other hand, you whiskey geek of the week. This is what you got to do. As soon as this broadcast is over, I need a picture of you with a glass of whiskey or some something in your hand or a bottle of whiskey, but a glass of whiskey is fine. Send a picture of yourself with the whiskey to me, please. On Messenger. If you can do it as fast as you can, and I will get you in a frame and up as our Whiskey Geek of the Week for this week. Thank you, Kevin. Good job. Uh, Cheryl saying, check out behind you. I keep looking behind me. What am I missing? What am I missing? Is it on my back? Has she put something on my back? Not on my back. Behind you, behind you, behind you. Guys, can you see anything that my wife has sabotaged? I can't see anything. I'm really lost here. Okay. 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 Uh, where are we? Tiger. Tiger. Not sure what that is. Irish Oh, David. Thank you for that. Okay. I'll take that. Just. Yeah, I was trying to make some kind of excuse there for a second, but you see, I couldn't come up with anything to say. Uh, but thanks for putting us right. Uh, but he was the fifth master distiller, so hopefully you all got that. Okay, I okay. Uh, confused me as well. So check the back of your head, really? Did she put something on the back of my head? Is that right? Okay, I have no idea what she's done. Has she put something on the back of my head? Is that right? Uh, Dr. Kirsty McCallum is the new master at Glenmoray. Okay, cool. So we got a sixth one at Glenmoray. Thanks for the update, David. Uh, but still, uh, you're all in the same game and brilliant job for Kevin. Really, really well done. Okay, so funny enough, I've got a bit of a mess down here. Um, a lot more messy than normal. I hope you enjoyed this evening. So let me just quickly run the members through uh, our quick spot prize giveaway competition. Remember, if you remember, you can go to our website. The link is in the description uh, and you can enter this spot prize giveaway. This week's prize is that double set of Glen Cairn glasses. Uh, and so four questions for you. These are the four questions and they all actually relate to the Singapore sling or the whiskey sling that I did. So go. question number one is this. And by the way, if you're not a member, you can just sort of play this for fun for yourself. Uh, or even better, you can go to our site, you can sign up and you can become a member and get involved in our whiskey giveaway competitions, our discounts, our extra uh, content and videos, all that sort of stuff. Question one is this, what is the name of the bar at the Raffles Hotel where the Singapore Sling was invented? What is the name of the bar there? I mentioned that. Uh, what have we got there? Uh, uh, Richard saying, every time you get close to your laptop, the sound cuts out. Is that right? You know something? Um, uh, I'm thinking that it's when I scroll. I think it's when I scroll through your comments that happens. Really sorry about that. Okay, let me do the scroll and then talk. Okay, David saying Google is great. Uh, not on your head, darling. All right. Been great. Thank you. 
Thought it was just me. Oh, so you're getting it as well, David. Uh, it's his beard interfering with the mic. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I, I think, guys, I think it's when I scroll, it cuts out. I think that might be when I'm really sorry about that. Not quite sure how to get around it. Maybe I need to stop talking when I scroll, but we'll, we'll see how that goes over the, over the coming weeks. I'll, I'll look at it over, over the next week for you. Next question, number two. Who invented the Raffle Singapore Sling? What was his name? Gave you that as well. Question three, in what year was the Raffle Singapore Sling invented? So I've asked you now for the name of the bar, the name of the person that invented it, and now the year gave you that as well. And four, how many different ingredients, not including the ice, did I use for my Whiskey's Raffles Singapore Sling? Told you that as well. Also, you can see it. So those are the four questions. Name of the bar, who invented in what year and how many ingredients did I use? The link is in the description. If you're a member, you can go over there and enter into our spot prize giveaway for the two Glen Cairn glasses. If you are not a member, there's a link in there for you to go to our website and sign up and become a Dream Whiskies member and become a deeper part of our community. And finally, if you are a member, uh, you can also click on a link there which will take you to what at the moment is the ginger um the ginger syrup instructional video and you can see how i made that but each week i'm going to put more and more exclusive stuff there which is just for the members as well so it has been a joy uh, for go it's the bow on the rum is it the bow on the rum chat i don't think it's the bow paul because because she's that's always there that's always there uh, Richard saying, or Richard was saying, it happens every week, though this evening it's worse. Okay, okay. I'll need to look at it. Yes, it's when you scroll. Um, Barry saying, cuddly toy. Uh, Jane saying, toast. <laughs> Is it the mic cutting out or Paul's voice? Yeah, that. it could be my voice breaking down, I'm thinking. You know? uh, thank you all for the great live broadcast. Thank you. Have a nice evening. I will use almond butter for this drink next time and it will be just like the Snickers almond bar. That sounds good. Look, every week I say this to you, wherever you are in the world, A, thank you for joining B, I hope you have had some fun this evening. C, I hope you enjoyed the cocktails, whether you made them or not. And, and, and most importantly, D, and that is I hope you are well and that you are safe. And let's all just sort of stick with this until we all start to gradually get back to some kind of normality. So look, from Dream Whiskies, until next week, same time, same place, we're out. Take it easy. Bye.